This right here is a combustion chamber and I'm going to use to heat this garage and I'm calling it a combustion chamber for the simple fact that it's not going to operate like most burners. As you can see there we have two tangible inlet tubes that are made out of handicap pipe. Um, this thing's been sitting here brazed for like a year. I haven't had time to do anything to it so that's why these brazes are all oxidized like that but that's basically some brazing. Um, and what we have here is a stainless steel gas line that's running through this tank and what I'm about to do is take some refractory cement and cover all the metal inside of this thing with refractory cement because stainless steel does not stand up to fire contrary to popular belief so basically what I have is a beer keg and a ten dollar stainless steel pot it would be nice if I could just run this the way it is but within weeks this bottom stainless steel pot will rust out the keg would probably follow right behind it. You have to have a special type of stainless steel to withstand high temperatures. And I don't even think this gas line would withstand it for very long. I've been working with combustion chambers for a while. And I've got these two units here that I'm working on for another project I can't disclose at the moment. But uh, you'll eventually see these things in operation. They are uh, basically uh, cyclone combustion chambers. And as you can see, well, this one doesn't really have any of that on it yet. But anyway, some of the other devices that I have made out of these metals have proven to me that only special stainless steels can be used. And that's why I went ahead and spent $30 for the refractory cement because of the testing that I've done on my cyclone combustion chambers and I do have videos on some of those devices and those units that you've seen no longer exist they literally burn themselves to rust because iron and steam react at high temperatures that's one of the issues I'm not going to get into all that right now but just wanted to get some documentation of what the interior of this device looks like before all the refractory cements in place that down there is a blast tube by the way, it's a copper tube that's going to allow me to inject air into the bottom, maybe to stoke it up. If it's not lighting good in the beginning or something, I just wanted somewhere to get some high pressure air in there and to maybe blast some of the ash around in case something is going on down there, just a way to kind of stir it up a little bit. 120 psi blast of air is bound to do a good job of that. So, Basically this little fan right here that I'm working on is what's going to run that. Um, this blower doesn't have a cooling chamber on it. So basically what I'm going to have to do is take this hose and connect it to this casing some way. Not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to have some holes cut inside. The reason I got to do that is because this blower does not have a cooling system for the motor itself. Okay, so this is a quick demonstration of a negative pressure burner. I know it's looking a little sick right now, but 
I don't have the money to paint this thing or anything. Basically what we've got are two tangential intakes. So they're sticking out of there. Kind of give me a rotational flow. I don't know if you can see that very well. I can't move this right now. I don't have a flashlight on me, but that's the exit. I think if uh, Not sure how to mess with the settings on this while it's working, but basically my idea was to get this whole pipe really hot so that the heat would rise up off it in the wintertime. I have it running on a special vortex tube. I'm going to run it at about 100 watts. Let's see how that does. Okay. Still got a nice little fire going. I don't want to get this thing roaring right now. This is kind of just wet sticks. And the type of vacuum system I'm using on here is one of these convergent divergent nozzles. Something like this here, where I have air from a vacuum cleaner blowing out a hose into that pipe that you see over there. I have an elbow hooked up outside. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm not exactly sure of the name of this type of device. You can see here, this is similar to what I have, but I don't have the geometry of this. It's an extremely low efficient setup. Uh, basically, I just have a pipe inside of the pipe. But it does work. So, eventually I may build a more efficient system you know get the ratios correct and all that because I can't tell you if you have the the end pipe too long let me see if I can find one if this section of the unit is too long it doesn't work well you've got to have it right at the very end of the pipe basically right here a drawing like this is where I got the idea for this kind of pump this is something like what I have, but not exactly. So, pretty cool. See, it doesn't quite give me a cyclone in there. It's starting to swirl a little bit. I hate to take the lid off right now. Temperature check here. It's running pretty cool. Now when it's 19 degrees below zero out here, this may help. This isn't very hot at all. I'm actually able to hold it. A little warm. Very worried about creosote buildup in this pipe. If anyone has any experience on that, I would love to hear what you have to say because after burning just one phone book, battery level is 65%. I noticed a lot of sludge. Yeah, this is kind of warm. It's probably 100 degrees down here. So. See what we got in here. Oh goodness. Yeah, that gets sucked out pretty quick. It looks like it's out. I'm gonna try to ignite it again. Yeah, I think I might get a glass dome, like a glass bowl to sit on there. I do like the fact that I can see what's going on in there. Have that little fan blowing on it now to kind of keep it from overheating. <clears throat> Definitely like it's not putting off any smoke because this is a negative pressure system. 
I don't have to worry about leaks or anything. <coughs> I'm going to turn it down now. It's not typically how high I'm going to be running it. It's at about 300 watts. I'm going to go down to 200. I don't know how much I like that. I don't have this thing kindled very good at all. Better turn it back up till it gets going. There's some small leaks letting air in right at that. If I put a screen inside of that glass, the flames won't actually touch the glass. Turn it down for it blow this lid up. Yeah, that is screaming. This pipe isn't actually touching anything at the exit. It's at 90 degrees. Swirling down a little bit now. Just making sure my lid don't glue shut. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm going to turn it down and see what happens. That time when I ignited it, it ignited instantly as if pyrolysis gases had built up. Kind of like a backdraft. I also have an air stoker line. We're going to give that, well it's a little late to try that. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. But that copper line down there enables me to blast air in there stoke the flame up. That lid is getting hot. Gotta say I don't like that.
This thing has a stainless steel water line going through it, by the way. I have it covered up with refractory cement because stainless steel will rust in these environments. I don't have the special type of stainless steel needed to pull that job off.